In a time before ours, the world was a place of indescribable wonder, teeming with life and beauty. But beneath this beauty, humanity became increasingly lost in an abyss of corruption and violence. The human heart, capable of so much love and compassion, had gone astray, choosing dark paths. While evil spread like a shadow, there was one man, different from all the others. Noah, a righteous and upright man, walked with God. Amid the moral decay that surrounded him, Noah was like a light shining in the darkness, remaining faithful to the divine ways. Sadness filled God's heart when he saw the extent of human evil, a creation that he had made with so much love, now distorted and lost. It was then that God decided to act, not to end human history, but to purify and start over. And for this new beginning he chose Noah. Imagine the weight of that choice, the responsibility of being the bearer of such a message, of being the bridge to a new tomorrow. Noah, our hero, was about to embark on the grandest of all missions, guided by the unshakable faith in his heart. On a morning that seemed like any other, humanity's destiny was about to change. Noah, amid the simplicity of his life, received a visit from the divine. A voice, both soft and powerful, broke the silence, echoing not just in his ears, but in his soul. Noah, said God, the wickedness of humanity has filled the earth with violence, and I am about to cleanse it. But you, Noah, you have found grace in my eyes. Your faith and your integrity have resonated through the chaos as a pure note in an out-of-tune symphony. Faced with the astonished look of his family, Noah listened with reverence to the divine instructions. Build an ark, commanded God, for I will bring a flood upon the earth to destroy all life under heaven. But you, your family, and a couple of every living creature will be saved to begin a new beginning. The words echoed in Noah's mind every instruction, every detail about the ark, etching itself into his heart. Despite the fear and uncertainty, Noah did not waver. I will do everything as you commanded me, he replied, his voice firm, his determination unshakable. As Noah began work, news of his venture spread quickly. Neighbors, friends, strangers, they all looked at Noah with disbelief and derision. Noah, the builder of the ark, they mocked, savior of animals, the man who talks to God. But the mocking words were like leaves in the wind to Noah. His faith was his armor, his obedience his sword. He knew he was not alone, for he walked with God. And so, Noah stood, not just as a man, but as a symbol of hope and faith in a world on the brink of destruction. On his journey, he would show that even in the face of the end, there is a beginning, that in obedience and faith, we find our true salvation. As the days passed and the seasons changed, the landscape around Noah's house transformed. Where once there had been only fields, now stood a colossal structure, a testimony to a man's faith in his God. The ark, immense and imposing, grew under the diligent hands of Noah and his family. I see, Noah said to his sons, as they fitted yet another beam to the skeleton of the ark, every nail, every plank, every corner of this ark is an act of faith. We are building more than a vessel, we are building a sanctuary of life, a cradle for the new beginning that God promised. As they worked, Noah told them about the importance of obedience, about how every decision, every action we take, echoes in eternity. A God chose us for this task, he recalled, and with every hammer blow, with every drop of sweat we shed, we honor that choice. The surrounding community watched, some with curiosity, others with even greater derision. Noah, the dreamer, they cried, the man who builds a ship in the middle of the field. But to Noah, the voices were distant, almost irrelevant. His mind was focused on his mission, his heart aligned with God's will. And, and then, the day came when the last plank was put in place, the last nail was hammered. Noah looked at his work, not with pride, but with humility and gratitude. A God has guided us every step of the way, he told his family, gathered before the ark. Uh, and he will guide us through what is to come. The animals began to arrive, couple by couple, a steady stream of life marching towards the promised safety inside the ark. Creatures, large and small, entered the ark, guided by an invisible force, a divine call that only they could hear. As dusk unfolded into a tapestry of dark clouds, the world fell silent, as if holding its breath in the face of the unknown. Then, so subtly that it could almost be mistaken for the whisper of the wind, the first drops of rain began to fall. Light drops, almost hesitant, but soon united into a powerful chorus, announcing the beginning of the flood. 
Noah, inside the ark, watched through a crack, his heart calm despite the storm that raged outside. This rain, he said, turning to his family, is the cleansing promised by God. It is the end of a world that has gone astray, but also the prelude to a new beginning. Our faith is the beacon that will guide us through this storm. The rain increased, turning into an impenetrable veil of water, swallowing the earth, covering hills and mountains. The ark, this fortress of wood and faith, began to rise, floating on the fury of the waters that claimed the land for themselves. Outside, the world Noah had known disappeared beneath the waves, a grim reminder of the price of disobedience and corruption. But inside the ark, there was peace. A deep peace, sustained by the certainty that, even in the deepest waters of desolation, God's grace was a safe shelter. For forty days and forty nights, rain descended on the earth, a continuous curtain of purification. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the rain stopped. Silence, a silence filled with promise and hope, enveloped the ark. Noah, with a contemplative look, knew that the journey was far from over. And now, he murmured, we await God's will to reveal to us the reborn land, the land that awaits us. As the flood waters began to recede, a new world slowly emerged from the depths. The mountains of Ararat, now islands of hope in the vast sea that covered the earth, welcomed the ark, a sanctuary of life in a world reborn. Noah, with his heart full of expectation, knew it was time to find out if the earth was ready to welcome its inhabitants again. He sent a raven, which flew away, disappearing into the horizon, finding nowhere to land. Then, with hands that shook slightly, he released the dove through the ark's window, a sign of peace sent to explore the new world. The return of the dove, with a verdant olive branch in its beak, was a moment of deep emotion for Noah and his family. That leaf wasn't just a sign of dry land, it was a message from God, a sign that life, with all its resilience and beauty, had prevailed over devastation. Risk a sea, said Noah, holding the branch before his teary eyes, this is the sign that God has not forgotten us. It is the promise of a new beginning, proof that even after the greatest of storms, there is hope for those who remain faithful. When the dove did not return after being sent a second time, Noah knew it was time. Reverently, he opened the great door of the ark, allowing sunlight to flood inside for the first time in many months. He and his family descended, stepping onto solid ground, each step a prayer of gratitude. Noah looked up at the sky, where clouds were parting to reveal a pristine blue, and he knew now was the time to honor God's promise. He built an altar and offered sacrifices, each ascending flame carrying his gratitude and his renewed commitment to live according to the divine will. With the earth finally dry and life about to flourish in its renewed splendor, Noah, together with his family, faced the dawn of a new era. Before them, the rainbow stretched across the sky, a luminous bridge between the divine and the earthly, between past promises and future fulfillments, asterisk. This rainbow, said God to Noah, is the sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures. A, a promise that I will never again use the waters of a flood to destroy life. As long as the earth exists, sowing and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. Noah, faced with the grandeur of this promise, knelt, humbled, the earth still damp beneath his knees. Lord, he replied, your mercy guided us through the waters, your strength sustained us in the ark. Now your promise lights our path. May our existence be a reflection of your grace, may our lives be built on obedience and praise to you. Noah's family, witnesses of this sacred moment, joined together in worship, their hearts filled with gratitude. The sacrifice offered on the altar, the first after the flood, ascended to the heavens, a sign of renewed communion between God and humanity. And so, the covenant was sealed, not just with words, but with the heart and soul of Noah, a man who, with his unshakable faith, had become the foundation of a new world. The rainbow, each time it appeared after the rain, would remind everyone of God's faithfulness, of his eternal promise of love and protection.